All right, college football week one under the radar against the spread. Pick them. I am excited about this. We have 12 games that were not discussed on the Bet US College Football Show. If you have not already, make sure that you go and watch those two shows. We did one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. Uh, they are doing massive numbers right now. So we certainly appreciate all you guys that are watching. Make sure you subscribe over on that channel. And uh, by the way, jump into our picks contest. Uh, giving away a $25 Amazon gift card every single week to whoever ends up winning this thing. You can go over to the website, winningcureseverything.com, and enter the contest there. It's only for Saturday games, so the deadline will be at 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday morning. Get your picks in, maybe win you some money. Uh, I think I think it's a good time for all. So go ahead and knock that thing out. But yes, oh, that is brought to you by BetUS. By the way, all of these lines that I'm going to give you Brought to you by BetUS. So go ahead and make sure that you've got yourself in over there. We will start off with this one here. TCU going to Colorado on a Friday night. And I, I'm i excited about this. It is the debut of Sonny Dykes at TCU. Got a lot of quarterbacks he can be playing. Quentin Johnson, of course, the wide receiver, is an absolute stud. I can't wait to watch him play. Uh, the line sits at 13 and a half in favor of TCU on the road. Total is 57. It's a 10 p.m. Eastern time game on ESPN. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I will take TCU. Now, I also like the idea of taking the TCU over. This is the debut. Sonny Dykes likes to come out and put on a show. And I do not like Colorado's roster at all. Like, I like Carl Durrell. I like what he tried to do there. But that roster has gotten significantly worse year over year. And... I don't know how he rebuilt it. I don't see... I mean, this team has a win total of three. I don't think they're even going to get close to that. So, I... If I don't think they're going to get close, TCU under two touchdowns, like, I think they're going to have a ton of explosive plays. I think you're going to see some fun stuff from Sonny Dykes. Uh, not all of it, because I don't think he's going to have to open up the entire playbook, but I do think that you're going to see uh, at least a couple of different quarterbacks, if not all three, that he's got... And I think they're all going to play well because I think that they can all fit into Sonny Dykes' offense. I mean, this is a fantastic, fantastic offensive football team just based on last year. I don't even think they knew what to do with all the parts that they had last year. And now you've got a guy that is offense first. Yeah, and Joe Gillespie, of course, the Tulsa D.C. coming in, going off against Colorado's offense. Oh, yeah, give me a little bit. Give me a little bit on that one. So, Yes, uh, I will take TCU to cover the 13 and a half there. North Carolina heads to App State on Saturday morning, and, and this is another one that I'm pretty excited about. In-state game, I've talked about it a little bit in the preview, but I am excited about this because I really like North Carolina. I like their talent here. Uh, they are a one-point favorite on the road. This has bounced all over the place. North Carolina was originally favored by three, and then it jumps back. App State, because of how bad North Carolina looked against Florida A&M last week, uh, it bounced back to App State being a one- or two-point favorite this week. It's bounced back across. North Carolina is now the favorite. Uh, look, it's going to be a wild atmosphere. It's an ESPNU game. It's at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I, the reason I like North Carolina here is I don't think they cared at all about that Florida A&M game. I don't think they put anything on film. I don't think that their defense did anything different. I think they were just getting in and then getting out of dodge. I think that's it. They didn't care one iota about that football game. Do I think that Gene Chizik is a great defense coordinator? I think he used to be. I don't know that he is now, but I don't know that you have to be to be able to beat App State. The roster difference here is massive between these two. Like I really think that North Carolina is significantly more talented does App State have the better, the better culture? Yeah, probably. I, I like what they've built there. But I, I cannot get it out of my head how fired up App State was back in like 2017 when Miami came in to Boone and just absolutely shellacked them. And it wasn't even a great Miami team. So uh, 2016 or 2017 or whatever it was, again, yeah, Miami was okay at that point, but they were not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. And App State was fired up. They had looked really good so far that season. 
they were getting a team at home, and I think they got beat 40, 45 to 17 or 52 to whatever it was. I mean, it was a thorough shellacking. North Carolina has a roster full of dudes. I think they will go out and be able to play. So I'm going to take North Carolina to cover the one here. Colorado State heads to Michigan. Now, this is not exactly a thrilling football game, but Michigan favored by 30 and a half here. Uh, 61 and a half is the total. Of course, if anybody watched Brad Powers uh, over on covers, I mean, as soon as he gave out that over, that line jumped three points immediately. It was 58. It's jumped up to 61 and a half. Uh, it's 12 p.m. on 12 p.m. Eastern Saturday on ABC, but we do get to see Cade McNamara be the starter again. He's going to start Game One just like he did the majority of last season. Actually, I think every game last season, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm going to take Michigan to cover 30 and a half. Now, my numbers say that this should be about 34. Uh, Colorado State, of course, new head coach Jay Norvell. Uh, lots of things to like about the direction that Colorado State is going, but this is Game One with a new regime and a ton of transfers, a lot of which played for him at Nevada. But, eh, I'm, I'm going to side with Michigan, who likes to run it up a little bit at home. They, they are not afraid of scoring points in their home arena, and I don't think that Colorado State is going to be able to put up a ton of points, not to mention the fact that I think Michigan's offense is going to get a lot more possessions because the way that Norvell's team likes to play they like to throw the ball quite a bit. I, I think you could see several three and outs against that Michigan defense. So I, I do think that Michigan can cover 30 and a half on that one. Arizona is heading to San Diego State on Saturday. The game is on CBS. It is a 3.30 p.m. Eastern time kick. Of course, CBS using their Mountain West Conference tie-in to put San Diego State on and I wonder if they regret it a little bit with all the, the off-field stuff going on around there. But regardless, we'll, we'll stay off of that. San Diego State is a 6.5-point favorite here. The total is pretty low, 46.5. Since I'm only picking sides here, I'm not going to worry about the total. I'm going to talk to you about the idea that San Diego State maybe did not fix their quarterback situation by bringing in Braxton Burmeister from Virginia Tech. He did not play well as a quarterback for guys that are good on offense, right? Justin Fuente used to know exactly what he was doing with quarterbacks, but he did not do so well at Virginia Tech with Braxton Burmeister. I don't think him going over to San Diego State, a team that has relied on its defense for quite some time, is going to fix anything for him, and I don't think it's going to fix anything for San Diego State's offense. I do not trust the Aztecs to be able to score the football unless somebody gives them the ball. And Arizona did that a couple of times last year, right? Um... Arizona brings in Jaden DeLora, the quarterback from Washington State, and they bring in uh, a transfer, Jacob Cowing, the wide receiver from UTEP, who was a top 10 PPA player for last season in all of FBS. He was the UTEP offense last year, and Jacob Cowing is phenomenal. Arizona's offensive line has three dudes that all weigh over 300 pounds. They are huge. I mean, just big old boys. I think they're going to have success against San Diego State. San Diego State without Cam Johnson, uh, or Cam Thomas, excuse me, of course, who led them in tackles for loss last year. Yeah, they've got some other guys that really know what they're doing. They have studs on defense. Again, I think all it's going to take for Arizona to be able to stay in this game is a couple of explosive plays from that passing attack. And I, again, I like what Jed Fish is doing with this roster. Like, they covered quite a few times last year when they maybe shouldn't have. They might have had some turnover luck, et cetera. But I think they got quarterback figured out. I think they got some playmakers on this team. I think they're building something here. And, yes, even though it is the grand opening of Snapdragon Stadium for San Diego State, maybe there's some distraction going on with the off-field stuff around that program. Maybe uh, maybe that defense lost a little bit with some of the guys that they lost and on offense. Uh, all the studs that they had last year, Greg Bell and the the tight end, Daniel, I forget it, uh, Bellin, Bellinger, maybe. Uh, those guys are gone. They they either graduated or went to the NFL. So I, I don't trust San Diego State to score. And if I'm not going to get a ton of points out of them, I only need really a couple of touchdowns from Arizona, maybe, maybe 17 points, and I can keep this thing within six and a half. Yeah, give me Arizona plus six and a half on this one for sure. 
Moving on from there, Tennessee at, excuse me, I'm not going to worry with Tennessee. Troy heads to Oxford, Mississippi to take on Ole Miss. Ole Miss a 21-and-a-half point uh, favorite right now. That's the current line over at BetUS. Total sits at 57-and-a-half. It's uh, Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on the SEC Network. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I kind of like Troy a little bit here. My line has this as Troy uh, as an 18-point underdog here. So that is a little bit different. Uh, it's 21 and a half. I mean, I'm getting over three touchdowns. Ole Miss is still trying to figure out their quarterback situation. They have a ton of new pieces. They are all super talented. But I'm going to tell you, I don't trust their defense very much. And while I do like their offensive pieces, Troy has a top 15 roster on defense. Like, their offense is not all that great. But John Summerall knows what he's doing on defense. I mean, he came over from Kentucky as their co-defense coordinator. But also, I think that what he's got at Troy is just an uber-talented defense that can give Ole Miss some trouble. Like, I, I trust Troy in this situation to keep this under three touchdowns. I will take the Trojans plus 21 and a half for sure. For sure on that one. You guys let me know what you think as well. I want to know what your picks are on this. So, we'll move along. BYU. BYU heads to South Florida, and the current line at BetUS is South Florida as an 11.5 point home dog. Total sits at 58.5, 4 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPNU. And there's some rumblings that the top two wide receivers for BYU are probable for this game, etc. I mean, nobody has explicitly said that they are out, but. It does make you pause a little bit, right? I, I've I've got BYU winning 10 games this year, so obviously I want them to do well. But, uh, you know, Gary Bohannon, the quarterback from Baylor that actually had a lot of success against BYU last season at Baylor, uh, he is now the starting quarterback at South Florida, and Jeff Scott's bunch seemed to do really, really well against the spread against ranked opponents last year at home. So I think they were 4-0, and uh, against the spread at home. Now, they didn't win a bunch of those, and this is a shorter line than some of those that he got before. But, I mean, they were right in that game against Cincinnati. They were, I mean, they did some good things. The talent level is up there. I'm going to go ahead and take South Florida here to cover 11 and a half. I, I love BYU. I love what they're bringing back. I mean, they have got a ton of returning production, et cetera. I like Jaron Hall, the quarterback. This one could get tricky. You know, again, this is one of those uh, mid-afternoon games in Florida uh, it gets a little a little tricky. The humidity could be a little crazy for BYU. Maybe they start off a little slow, pull away later. Uh, but I could totally see BYU been winning by like 10 points uh, because they decide, hey, if we don't have our top two wide receivers or if they're a little hobbled or whatever, uh, then maybe we're just going to run the ball a lot and get out of there with a win. I could totally, totally see that happening. So I will take South Florida to cover 11 and a half on that one. Army heads to Conway, South Carolina, to Myrtle Beach, to fight the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers on the Teal Field. Now, Coastal is a two-point favorite here, total of 53-and-a-half. This one's at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on, on ESPN+. Plus. And I, I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this game. I think... I'm going to go with Coastal because I think they're more explosive. I don't like the situation with Army here. They lost Christian Anderson. They lost Jabari Laws, the two quarterbacks that they had the most success with last season. Uh, the other guys that they had on the roster really did not do well when they were asked to throw the football. Uh, and again, it's Army, so I don't expect them to throw the ball much at all. But there, there was not a lot of success coming when those other guys were behind center. In this situation... Yeah, I know that there's not a lot of returning production for Coastal Carolina, but if you still got Grayson McCall at quarterback and you still got uh, Jamie Chadwell calling that offense, I think you have more chances for some explosive plays out of Coastal Carolina than you do out of Army. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to take Coastal at less than a field goal here at home. I, I think they're the overall better team, especially with the better quarterback. So, so give me that one uh, for... You know, the teal field. <laughs> I, will, I will go with the better quarterback. 
I will go with an interesting coach. That's an interesting offensive matchup, by the way, as far as the schemes go, because uh, Jamie Chadwell runs something that is not unlike what the triple option is that Jeff Munkin is running. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen, but yeah, I'm going to take Coastal to cover the two on that one. Memphis heads to Starkville, Mississippi to face off against Mississippi State, and the Bulldogs are a 16-point favorite in year three under Mike Leach here. The total sits at 57. Uh, it's Saturday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPNU. So not a primetime spot, but regardless, uh, Memphis is 0-9 against the spread on the road under Ryan Silverfield. And while this does seem like a ton of points, at Mississippi State is still mad about the way that that game ended last year in the Liberty Bowl. Remember, it was a 31-29 to game that, you know, uh, Memphis, I'm not going to say had no business winning, but Mississippi State doubled them up on yardage last year. I mean, it was over 400 yards to like 200 yards for Memphis. And you had a kind of fluky punt return touchdown that maybe should have been ruled down. Uh, just a lot of, lot of different ways that Mississippi State lost that game. Will Rogers in his third season, I think the offense is going to be ridiculous. Uh, this is, I think this is going to be a really good year for Mississippi State. Uh, there's a lot of people talking about a ton of NFL talent on this state roster, just undervalued, under underappreciated, right? And I think they're probably right because you, I mean, the average age of the dudes on this Mississippi State roster is like 21 and a half. I mean, you got some old guys on this roster that have been around for a long time that are now heading into their third season with Mike Leach. And I'm going to I'm gonna roll with the Pirate. I know it's 16 points, but I'm, I'm going to take Mississippi State in this spot to cover 16 because I don't trust Memphis right now. Now, could Seth Hennigan, the, or the I guess now true sophomore quarterback, uh, do some amazing things for him? Yeah, but I don't know that I trust a bunch of the playmakers. Uh, I think Memphis will score some. I think Mississippi State will score more. So I will ride with State to cover 16 on that. We will stick in the SEC, and we're going to move 82 miles to the east. And we are going to talk about uh, Utah State going to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And Alabama currently a 41.5-point favorite at home. This opened around 37 and has now bounced all the way up to, it was at 42.5 at one point. There was some my back on that one. Uh 62 and a half is the total. This is a 7.30 p.m. Eastern time kick on SEC Network. I, obviously, I think Alabama is going to win the game. I don't think that's hard to predict, especially when the team is up, you know, is a 40-something point favorite. But I don't think that you saw the Utah State last week that you will see this week. I think they came out against UConn and maybe expected UConn to lay down or they didn't exactly know what to expect from UConn, etc. I think that Utah State will put up a little bit more of a fight in this game. They did get out of uh, their home stadium with a win over UConn last week, although it was not impressive, 31-20. to But again, that was the North Carolina situation. I don't think they cared anything about that game. They knew they could do whatever they needed to do and get out of there with a win, try a few things here and there. But I, you know, I like some of the pieces that they've got, etc. I don't think that Alabama is going to shut these guys out. Uh, but it, could I see something along the lines of, you know, before Alabama goes to Texas, do they get up really big early and then try and play a bunch of guys and develop that depth? Yeah, I think so, because they play in Austin next week. I'm going to take Utah State to cover the 41-and-a-half. It's a very terrifying proposition because we have seen Alabama just demolish some teams before. But I think Utah State is a little bit better than what they showed last week. And I think that line should be closer to what it was. About 37 and a half, 38. Uh, so you give me about three and a half points of, uh, of an advantage, and I will feel good about that one. Boise State is going to Corvallis on Saturday night. And I'm excited about this. Uh, facing off against the Oregon State Beavers, Oregon State is a two and a half point favorite here, total of 57. It's a 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, late, late kick on ESPN. And Boise State was not great in certain situations last year. Uh, of course, the first game of the year at UCF, just a complete disaster with all the delays and everything else. It was a Thursday night. Uh, they got up big, and then UCF came back, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Andy Avalos, I think, needs to have a good year this year. 
Jonathan Smith and what he has done at Oregon State has been incredibly impressive. And look, Oregon State was undefeated against the spread at home last year, but also they have not covered a week one game or their opening game under Jonathan, uh, under Jonathan Smith. I, I have found it very interesting on which side to go with here. I don't know that I necessarily trust Boise State's offense. Um, I do trust their defense. I think year two under Andy Avalos is going to be a big, big deal because he is a defensive guy. Uh, but I also think, you know, they had quite a few injuries, et cetera. They lose uh, their top wide receiver. I, I still think Boise will be able to kind of manhandle these guys. And I will I will take Boise to uh, cover the two and a half. And I think they can probably win the game in Corvallis. I, I like this line a lot more when it was at three. But uh, I had this closer to a pick em, even in Corvallis. And and I'm going to take Boise to cover two and a half. So I, I do think that the Broncos are a lot of fun. At Jonathan Smith and what he's done at Oregon State is really interesting. But And I do think they're going to be pretty good again this year. But they lose some pieces, and I'm curious to see which way they go. I think Boise State is a really, really fun, good football team. So I will ride with the Broncos. Moving on from there... Kent State heads to Washington, heads to Seattle, and the Huskies are 23-point favorites here. The total sits at 59.5. And, And yeah, this one's Saturday, 10.30 p.m. on FS1. Uh, There's a lot of people, you know, taking their their chances and and whatnot, putting a little money line sprinkle on Kent State to beat Washington because of how bad they were last year, etc. I will tell you this. Kalen DeBoer is a fantastic football coach. He was Michael Penix's offensive coordinator at Indiana. Penix, of course, has transferred over. He is the starting quarterback for the Huskies. He appears to be healthy. And that Huskies team has talent. They have got a bunch of talent to work with. I think that they are going to be pretty good this year, like just right off the bat. You know, they they got some transfers in there, and they already had talent there. I think that this team is going to be raring to go and even as bad as they were last year, they were still able to throttle uh, some not great G5 competition with Arkansas State, etc. Kent State, I believe, is number 109 in the country in returning production, and the majority of that was on offense. So, let's see. I'm going to pull that up right now. Kent State, number 109 returning production, only 53% returning production only 42% returning production on offense. Now, they do have Marquez Cooper, uh, the running back, coming back. They do have uh, Dante Cephas, the uh, the wide receiver, coming back as well. Like, they they got some dudes, but, oh, I do not think that they line up well at all with, uh, with Washington on this. Uh, if you look at what Kent State was able to do for Sean Lewis against, you know, teams like uh, Texas A&M and... Even even Maryland last year, etc. Like teams that would not just maul you to death, uh, they were not great when going up against big time competition. I think that they use these games not only as a paycheck but also as a way to uh, try out some new things. We'll say that last year, twenty twenty one, they had a pretty ridiculous non conference schedule. They played at Texas A and M, lost by thirty one. They played at Iowa, and they lost by twenty three. They played at Maryland, and they lost by 21. I think Washington is better than Maryland. I think Washington, with this new offense, is probably better than Iowa. I don't expect Kent State to score a lot. I expect Washington to show off a lot of their new toys. So I'm going to ride with Washington to cover that 23. Uh, Kent State normally doesn't put up much of a fight in games like these. So I will uh, will certainly take the Huskies on that one. Last one that we will hit for today, it is the Monday night game. And I'm excited about it. because I'm excited about all football games this weekend. It's week one. It's going to be a good time. We've got Clemson heading to Georgia Tech, and this one is being played at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, not at the home field of Virginia Tech. I mean, of uh, of Georgia Tech, excuse me. Like, that, that's the crazy part about this. Like, you've you got a conference game. Do not take these games and put them over into what is effectively a neutral site. Like, that's just ridiculous. So, uh, Georgia Tech is a 2020... Maybe if I can talk to in the show. At Georgia Tech is a 22-point underdog at home. Total of 51. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday night on ESPN. Standalone window. Going to be a good time. I 
Do I believe in Clemson a whole lot right now? No. But I'm still going to take them to cover this 22. Okay. Uh, changing over the coordinators, I think, could be very tricky. Also, I think that Dabo Sweeney does not like Jeff Collins. They had a dispute a couple of years or a few years ago, however long ago it was, that first year for Jeff Collins. I think Dabo could see this as an opportunity to maybe knock Jeff Collins out of this job, and I don't think he's going to pull off the gas. Uh, you got a healthy team this go round. Clemson was not healthy when this game was fourteen to eight last year in Clemson. I think full offensive line, full defense. I mean, th- these defensive ends are not going to stop. Th- that defensive line is going to continue to wreak havoc on that offensive line for Georgia Tech. Uh, Georgia Tech had a bunch of guys lose or leave out of the transfer portal. I don't trust any of the ones that came in. I This is just a sad situation in Atlanta, for sure. I think Clemson could absolutely demolish them and still not be very good on offense. I, I will certainly say that. I don't think they have to be good on offense to be able to win this by more than 22. Uh, you kind of saw that last year when Clemson beat up on South Carolina. right? Once they got healthy at the end of the year, South Carolina was a pretty good, competent football team, and they beat them 30 to nothing. So in this one, I'm only giving up 22, and I have a feeling that that stadium, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium there, is going to be probably half and half Clemson Georgia Tech fans, if not more Clemson fans. Yeah. Give me the Tigers here. I, I I don't know that I trust the new coordinators a whole lot. I don't think I have to. I think Clemson has got a ridiculously uh, big advantage as far as the roster goes, at, at the line of scrimmage, at everything, really. So I, I will take Clemson to cover the 22 there. All right, don't forget, make sure that you go and enter in the picks contest. It's being held over at runyourpool.com, but you can also just go to winningcureseverything.com and click on contest up at the top. There is a link in the description for it, so hopefully you guys will go and check that out. Enter in the contest. Winner each week gets a $25 Amazon gift card, and you can continue to enter each and every week, and we will have a prize that will be announced here in a few weeks for the season-long winner, whoever has the most picks right against the spread as the season goes along. So go ahead and check that out. It's powered by BetUS. The show is powered by BetUS. They are where the game begins. Make sure that you check it out, BetUS.com, but also check out the BetUS College Football Show as well. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.